Well, happy Friday, everybody. I hope you are ready for a great weekend of worship at E-Free Church. Now, this Sunday at all of our campuses, our Gaylor campus, our Sault Ste. Marie campus, our online campus at both 9 o'clock and 1030, we're going to continue our series we're calling Focus. And we're focusing on six catalysts that we've identified that we need for spiritual growth. We've already seen talking to God. We've already seen reading the Bible. Last Sunday, we looked at serving. This week, we're going to look at characteristic number four, and we're going to call it generosity. So I hope you'll be part live and in person or live online, 9 o'clock, 1030, this Sunday morning. Well, in our morning check-ins, we're going through the life of Elijah. We've reached chapter 18, verse 41, where we're going to learn about Elijah's prayer life. And it's important. Because as we saw yesterday, in James chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, Elijah is identified as having an energetic prayer life. Now, what makes someone's prayer life energetic? How can you add energy to your prayer life? We're going to learn several different ways, beginning with this one. Here's number one. Let me read in... Verse number 41 of 1 Kings 18. It says, Now Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink. This is after the battle on Mount Carmel. Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the roar of a heavy shower. Now it hasn't rained in three and a half years. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. But what does Elijah do? But Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel by himself. There he crouched down on the earth and put his face between his knees, and he began to pray. So what's the first characteristic we learn about Elijah's prayer life that made his prayer life energetic? It's this. Elijah prayed in solitude. He went off by himself. And by the way, that was right after that great victory on Mount Carmel, where at that point, he could have done all the interviews. He could have been on all the network TVs. He could have been doing all the spotlight things. But instead, he goes off by himself to pray. You want to add energy to your prayer life? Find a place of solitude. Now, why is that important? Because when you pray in a place where no one can see you and no one can hear you, you'll pray differently. You know why? Because when you pray when other people are around, let's be honest, you're thinking about what they're hearing. And it might affect the way you pray. But when you pray by yourself, you know the only one listening is God. By the way, the New Testament teaches us to pray that way. Matthew 6.6, 6, when you pray, Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what's done in secret, your prayers, will reward you. Not only that, Jesus prayed this same way. Mark 1.35 says, In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place. And there he was praying. Elijah added energy to his prayer life by finding a place of solitude. Jesus added energy to his prayer life by finding a place of solitude. And I know for some of you it may be a challenge, but if you could find that place of solitude where no one could see you, where no one could hear you, I believe it'll add energy to your prayer life. Why don't you try it today? So Father, May we find that place of solitude, a place where only you can hear us and only you can see us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you'll share this on your Facebook page. I hope you'll be part of E-Free Church this Sunday. And join us again Monday morning as all next week we'll keep looking at more characteristics of the prayer life, the energetic prayer life of Elijah. Have a great weekend.